money now, but you know you want to give a large amount, you can do it that way. Um, thank you so much for watching this. Um, thank you for um, any donations that you can give. And thank you for supporting John Hopkins uh, Children's Center through Extra Life. Enjoy the stream. This year, I'm participating in Extra Life to raise money for Johns Hopkins Children's Center. Why? Because they saved my daughter's life two times. The first time was just within a few days of her being born. Um, they found out that she had um, something wrong with her intestines and they did a life-saving surgery. The second time was when she was two years old. And again, um, intestinal issue that they found and um, with a quick and easy surgery, uh, they were able to uh, fix her up and save her life once again. Um, she had the, the same problem that she had actually was uh, what killed one of the BGs. Um, so it's one of those things that if, if left undiagnosed, um, it just presents as so many other things. And so, you know, it was great that the doctors they were able to figure out what it was and give her the surgery that she needed. So any amount that you can give will help because any amount will help Johns Hopkins be able to have um, better facilities or provide for people that can't afford it on their own. Um, I do have um, rewards for higher donation amounts, which you can see on the Extra Life page, but um, just anything you give uh, would be really helpful. And also, um, they um, have it so that you can donate uh, monthly instead of all at once. So if you don't have all the money now, but you know you want to give a large amount, you can do it that way. Um, thank you so much for watching this. Um, thank you for um, any donations that you can give. And thank you for supporting John Hopkins uh, Children's Center through Extra Life. Enjoy the stream. Well, you know what that music means. It's time for Go Go Nippon, my first trip to Japan, session seven. And uh, here we go. Oops. Hi there we go. <laughs> so, uh, loading up. I think this is my latest one at this point. Yep. Load him up. <laughs> Time to learn some Kyoto stuff. Kyoto was Japan's capital for over a thousand years, until it was changed over to Tokyo in 1867. So around the time of the Civil War. Never fails. You get into the game, your daughter calls. Be right back.
Okay, today's going to be a really short playthrough, because um, my daughter's done, and I'm going to need to help my wife do some stuff. But I just want to get out of the scene. For over 1,000 years, Kyoto became the capital in 794. Before that, Japan's government was based in the Nara Prefecture, and it moved with each change of the head of state. But in 794, they built a new city on this land. It was known as Heiankyo, and its layout was based on the contemporary capital of China. Interesting, given their enmity at the moment. That city remained as Japan's capital for over 1,000 years afterwards. Such a long time, hmm? But, hmm, what's wrong? What year did the Edo period start? In 1603. Wasn't Tokyo the center of government during the Edo period? In that case, Kyoto should have stopped being the capital that year. <laughs> you make a good point. It's true that the center of Japanese government was moved to Tokyo during the Edo period. But while the shogun in Edo had the real power, the formal head of the government was not the shogun himself, but the emperor here in Kyoto. So even during the Edo period, the Japan, Japan government was technically centered in Kyoto. And even when it officially moved to Edo, Kyoto and Osaka next door continued to grow as if they were still the capital, right? That's right! I see. So you could say, Kyoto is a city that maintains the traditions, forms, and culture of Japan's good old days. I see. I guess even I think of the traditional Japanese culture when I think of Kyoto. But still. Actually, I think of Nintendo when I think of Kyoto. <laughs> but you'd ra rather be seeing the town for yourself, instead of listening to our lectures, right? <laughs> How did you know that? Because we can read your face like a book, right, Akira? Yeah, especially when you're thinking perverted things. No way! Ah, response like that. Wait a minute. You mean you do think of those things? N no th that was just an automatic response, that's all. What? Are you saying we like in womanly charms? Can't wait with this girl. <laughs> what are you talking about? Do you want me to think those things or not? That's... Oh, you idiot. Of course I don't want you to think about it, you perv. I told you, I'm not. Come now, Akita. Let's put this strange quarrel to rest. Concerning the earlier issue, it's no wonder you're more interested in the modern town. Kyoto's still a major metropolis, after all. So it's still gradually changing as new people and shops come in. I see. Now that you mention it, I can see that it's true. Well, as long as we're here, we should really look around. So let's cut the chit-chat. It's time for the quick tour. Yes, it is. That's what I've been waiting for. So, where should we start? Let me see. I think that's the best place, don't you? That? So weird when the game does that. First, the entry fee. There. Whoa. This is... Kiyomusadera. The most famous temple in Kyoto. Kiyomizo Dara. Dera. They say Kiyomizo Dara was completed before Kyoto became the capital in the year 778. That's pretty incredible to have such an old temple. Before Kyoto was capital, there are temples that old? Kisudima Dera is known for the, how the main hall juts out to the side of the mountain. The main hall has been rebuilt over and over due to fires. The last rebuild was in 1633, so it's still quite old. It was still built 400 years ago, then. It's the standard for the stone buildings of America and Europe to survive that long, but for these eastern wooden structures to last so long shows the care that goes into them. I know! Did you know the Japanese phrase, jump from the stage at Kiyomizo, meant to plunge headfirst into something? The stage at Kiyomizo? It refers to this building? Yes, they say if you screw up your courage and jump from here, your wish will come true. They say that in the old days, many men really would make the jump to show their determination. From here? But it's... it's really far down. Yeah, they say some people died from it. Honestly, men are such idiots. I can't help but agree with you there. Alright, so, uh, unfortunately, uh, this was a short uh, stream, but perhaps I'll get some more time tonight. Um, gotta go take care of some stuff for dinner. But, um... Thanks for watching. If I had known it would be so short, I wouldn't have wasted time with the uh, the appeal. But uh, such is life when you're gaming as a dad. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again in a little while.